Hello and welcome fellow motorsports fans. It is finally time for what feels like our first regular season episode of the single seater edition of Race Week Review. And our big headline story of the week is Andrea Kimi Antonelli's F2 debut and in particular the social media reaction to said debut and mostly his qualifying it really felt like and also my opinion on said social media commentators. But since we always begin with the slower classes, our natural starting point for the day is the third round of the Formula Winter Series. The Formula Winter Series has begun its second half of its very, very short four-round season. And now recent championship contender Keanu Alessari has returned from his UAE adventures to, you know, continue his fantastic form in the Winter Series. He stomped race one, lights to flag more or less. He was a wing contender in the second race and just got mugged off at the end. And he was also a wing contender in the third race and unfortunately got wrecked uh, in a bit of a weird incident. Nonetheless, Keanu Alessari looks like one of the hot F4 prospects. He continues his form in Europe and I think he will definitely go into the Spanish F4 as a title favorite. Nonetheless, the more interesting story about this winter series really is the former championship contenders, or well, they are still the championship contenders, but both Cardenas and Peebles, and to a lesser extent also rookie Gladish, all were sort of not absent, but struggling this time out. All three of them not scoring a whole lot. Gladish in particular had a horrific accident getting wrecked on the starting line of race one after stalling. Um, obviously, partially his fault or maybe the car or whatever. But, but anyway, none of them had like the front running pace we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Peebles, maybe. Cardenas, I believe, was also in podium contention once. But it really was not the front running performance we expected. And crucially, it's also not just because of rookies stepping up, really. At least it doesn't feel that way to me. I say that, but then again, we had a rookie win or a maiden victory in the second race with Strauven stealing one. He did take the win from Alazari and Jack Beaton, who also returned from the UAE, also continued his fantastic form. So yeah, that's a nice storyline. And then also James Agosi also got his... I want to say maybe he got one actually in the um, Central European Formula 4 last year, whatever, it wasn't streamed as far as I know. He got his first proper meaningful F4 win, let's put it that way. So that was quite nice to see those guys stepping up a little bit. Um, another highlight storyline, or one we've been keeping an eye on, is René Lammers, who has finally sort of found his footing, I want to say. Yes, there was still some rough races, some incidents and everything, but now he is a consistent top 10 runner when everything's going well. And let's say if this series was a couple of rounds longer, I think it wouldn't take much more time for him to start fighting for wins. Talking about rookies though, there was a recent debutant with Enzo Tamanichkul, the Red Bull Jr., making his debut. Yes, of course, it's the old caveat of if you debut late in a winter series, it's always going to be a little rough, in particular as a rookie. Nonetheless, it really wasn't impressive. Um, yeah, take it for what it is. He, there weren't any expectations, but at least he didn't set the world on fire on debut. We had a very tiny feel-good story that I do need to point out, which is the first of the Jensa drivers finally sort of getting it together, which is Adam Hidek, I believe they pronounce it, Hungarian driver. So again, nation with not that many racing drivers. I am already a big fan. And uh, yeah, he's looking good. He's been fighting for points, getting close to them, and also scored in race two. So yeah, just a nice little feel-good story from the Jensa camp. Let's move on to the slightly faster cars. Just as a short aside, we had the Euro Cup 3 Winter Cup round, whatever, a non-championship round. Bit of a shakedown, bit of an off-season thing for all the boys to get out on track. And an opportunity for us to see how, in particular, the rookies will maybe perform in the category. It was a bit difficult to take too much from this, in my opinion, mainly because the MP Motorsports cars were so far above the rest of the field like the Campos really struggled to actually fight with them so both Rinicella and Sangrera had a pretty easy time and should have been P1-2 in both races unfortunately Sangrera's engine decided he wasn't going to take home that P2 in the second race but nonetheless they were very convincing performances from the pair of them in particular Valerio Rinicella who I am very fond of and I think he will do very well if I remember correctly though he isn't even going to be in Eurocup I think he'll be in Fracker but 
who knows, I, I often get confused as you might know, might know by now. The other interesting name in this is Christian Ho, who at least on paper should be one of the favorites, definitely for a rookie title going into the season. And she lived up to that expectation, I'd say comfortably the best compass but as i said it felt like the car just didn't quite have the punch required to actually fight for the wins and then in a i want to say similar fashion not really just in a bit of a depressing fashion there is valentin klus the german racer who also just stepped up to the category and unfortunately his his pace was decent not fantastic but sort of what you'd expect from him you know decent but not fantastic that sums up valentin klus but um, yeah, I think he had mechanical problems in both of the races, so couldn't really bring home any of the results. And it looked like he could barely actually drive the races, so bit of a shame. Let's finally move on to the big international series. The Formula 3 opening round in Bahrain was not quite what we expected, but at the very least a lot closer to our expectations than another series we will cover in just a second. But our title protagonists were not as far up the order as we would have expected. In particular, Dino Boganovic. It's not pace issue, but he has had lap one problems in both races and didn't score a single point. Now, he is coming into this as one of our two or three big, big title favorites. Uh, with the way this round's been looking, it'll be three title favorites at least. Nonetheless, Obviously, yes, he did not not score because of the pace. It was accidents. It was a stalling on the grid in the, in the feature race, if I remember correctly, or at the very least, a very, very poor getaway from the line. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any mechanical reasons for that. I, I haven't read any reports about it afterwards, so who knows? It, they haven't said anything about it, so I assume it was driver error. This is the signs of probably a driver maybe you know being uh, struggling a little with the pressure now coming in as one of the big protagonists for this season but um, yeah he can't have any more of those weekends having one with zero points if you want to win this title will already be an uphill battle from now on on the other side of the garage gabriele mini did had sort of the opposite approach it almost felt like where he seemed to be very calm and collected but maybe not quite as like much in contention for anything as we would have expected so he was he scored good points in both of the both the sprint and the feature but he wasn't fighting for podiums he definitely wasn't fighting for any of the wins so just a very smooth consistent start to the season now if you've seen him last year i think this is a very sensible approach because honestly if he doesn't crash he's he's got the pace the wins will probably come later on but yeah just a thing to keep an eye on if that was maybe prema struggling as well it's difficult to say from the outside, but a thing to keep an eye on. Our third big title protagonist is probably the one who either lived up the most to expectations or even overperformed, which is Luke Browning with an absolutely dominant feature race win. That was really, really beautiful to watch. Unfortunately, in the first race, um, he was he had a good drive up the order in the sprint initially. Then it looked like he maybe cooked his tires a little. It was weird. But yeah, he was starting to go backwards pretty quickly. And then on top of it, got a really ridiculous 10 second penalty for getting forced off track, essentially. I would show you the clip right here. But as you can probably tell from the lack of appropriate background footage, if you use any sort of Liberty Media copyright, this video uh, won't be available for you to see. So unfortunately, I can't show you the incident. Um, it was a weird one. Race control was very, you know... I guess it's technically in the rules, but 10, second felt, 10 seconds felt incredibly harsh. It didn't really matter in the end anyway. He dropped down too far, if I remember correctly. Okay, now, since we've talked about the championship favorites, there's obviously a lot of other drivers on the grid. And one of the key players was the third Prema guy, actually, Arvid Lindblad. Outperforming expectations, which is a theme for all the rookies, really. But yeah, he hit the ground running in the sprint. He took a pretty, pretty dominant win, actually, on debut. That was definitely not expected given his testing performances, but also his Formula Regional Middle Eastern performances. So that was very cool. But then again, it did cool right back off in the feature. So I don't really know what to make of this. It could have been the classic Arvid performance we've seen in the Formula Regional Middle East as well, where he just stomps a sprint race given the opportunity but doesn't really have the pace to fight for such things outside of the reverse grid setting. 
just a thing to keep an eye on, but I think it's already safe to say I probably underestimated him. Um, my bad, I guess. As I said, a couple other rookies really hit the ground running, and one I do need to highlight this time out already is Tim Tremnitz, because he actually ended up being the best MP driver, and by quite a long shot. Alex Dunn was good, Stuka was struggling a lot throughout the weekend, but yeah, Dunn was good, didn't quite fight within the top 10, usually just on the outskirts, but Tremnitz was a proper podium contender in both the races. This was, again, really, really great to see. Yes, I think he got promoted to F3 a year late anyway, so this is kind of expected, but he's still a rookie, obviously. It doesn't, doing one more season in Fracker doesn't give you more experience in the F3 car, does it? So still very nice result, and I hope this continues. Last of our quick F3 storylines is the art team as a whole. I think we need to highlight them overall because last year they had a really really rough campaign with pretty much everyone struggling gregory saucy had a couple decent races and that was about it both solov and frederick were nowhere and this time they hit the ground running solov was actually a podium contender for the first time in his f3 career um, he didn't quite get it in the sprint he it looked like again probably murdered his tires a bit too quickly but still very very nice result even better a guy i tend to overlook Lawrence van Erpen. uh at this time i may i want to make sure to keep an eye on him this season you please uh, hold me accountable down in the comments when i start forgetting about him again inevitably but yeah he actually got a very very nice podium in the sprint race on his f3 debut as well certainly not expected and then kristen kristen mensel was also a podium contender and brought home p2 in the feature race so art is here to fight this season it won't just be prema and trident and the occasional high tech there will be mps and arts in the mix as well so this f3 season is shaping up to be really really competitive and fun to watch now there are obviously lots and lots of other drivers that didn't quite get the opportunity in this video because there's just way too many of them so they will probably be featured more prominently in one of the future episodes Therefore, if you want to make sure not to miss any of those, please subscribe to the channel and you can also leave a like if you want to help me out a little. I would really, really appreciate it. Now let's move on to Formula 2. Quite contrary to what we just talked about in Formula 3, the F2 title fight is not at all what we expected it to be. This is mostly down to a very drastic change in sort of team dynamics given the new car and also Bahrain always tends to throw up some weird results. Nonetheless, this felt like the table was just flipped upside down really to be honest. Zane Maloney in absolutely stunning fashion stomped both of the races. I don't even know how that's possible really. He dominated the sprint with incredible non-existent tire wear teammate Miata unfortunately just bottled that one otherwise he would have probably been up there as well and then in the feature he also made his way to the front and just drove off into the distance and never really seemed to have any significant tire wear or anything like that so very very impressive from Maloney and definitely well let's let's just put it this way Red Bull is probably regretting not re-signing him right about now which was always a bit of a dodgy decision but yeah this was incredible on the flip side our title contenders so namely Oli Behrman and Victor Martins were both nowhere with Martins there's a caveat he would have been in the feature race he had a very different strategy but he was at least you know on for a podium or like a top five ish result in that region and unfortunately the engine died in classic f2 fashion so not really much he can do about that with bearman it was the big one and it was a story we teased at the beginning of the video it was the prema just being a bit dog shit for lack of a better word the car just failed these two incredible talents and obviously alongside ollie bearman there is a little italian boy named andrea kimi antonelli who had a lot of eyeballs on him this weekend for obvious reasons in talks about the um, being the potential successor to Lewis Hamilton. And, you know, as you'd expect with a protege like that, there is a lot of people that want to see him fail and they do have Twitter access for some reason. I don't really know why, but here we are. Now, if you were one of those people thinking oh yeah Kimi is probably people were overhyping him he's p18 in his first ever qualifying let's just ignore the fact that he's on a track he's never raced at 
in a car he's never raced and he skipped an entire step on the ladder like all of these alone would be decent reasons for you to have just a bad quality session on your debut i think that would be an entirely acceptable result here's the key though i don't think he had a bad quality session i i really don't he was ahead of very experienced teammate ollie bam and this is the key that some people were overlooking and i know i probably don't need to tell you this if you clicked on this video i assume you probably actually watched the race but um yeah there was a lot of people that seemingly either didn't watch the race and then also just didn't bother to like check oh there's teams in f2 and they play a role actually i didn't know about this i thought all the cars were the same yeah um it is a really really bizarre one so just a quick one for all the kimmy let's say haters or doubters which you know that's fine you can doubt the kid you don't need to believe he's the future goat like i might secretly do you know that's entirely fine and justified but um please don't make a p18 in his first ever quality session while out qualifying his teammate um the reason for it or like part of your argument now is very weak in my opinion now in the actual races unfortunately it didn't go much better although notably again in both the sprint and the feature he actually beat bearman on track which is kind of important but honestly not really the best move about this was uh, overtaking bearman around the outside in the feature that was a very very nice kimmy move but Behrman's tires or car was shot he was struggling a lot so I don't even know if that means a whole lot so I I just want to say none of the results you've seen from Prema neither from Kimi nor from Behrman really looked like anything representative of the drivers or of the things we should expect going forward this season now this out of the way if there are losers as always means there must be some winners and as I teased earlier Kimi aside Holy fuck, the rookies were amazing. That's the thing that we need to point out. So obviously I was a bit of a, a Bottoletto doubter beforehand. He hit the ground running. Yes, the car looked very, very strong. And he scored a pole on debut, which again, there's a caveat here, which is technically, this is a reverse caveat. Technically here, his teammate got the pole and then got DQ'd after the fact. So, you know, you could argue not even as impressive. Um, although, no, still very, very impressive if you ask me. And then another two guys that I wasn't really super, super high on, in particular, Paul, uh, Paul Aaron. Now, obviously, I, we can't tell maybe the high-tech was secretly OP because his teammate is Cordiel and we'll never really know. But um, I don't think it is. I think he just had a really, really solid weekend. And in a very similar fashion, O'Sullivan, with him, not as unexpected for me, but still also hit the ground running, was there from day one and was actually more or less keeping up with Martins. So yeah, what a fantastic rookie lineup, really stepping up to this whole idea of this being the most competitive F2 grid in a long time. Just two more quick storylines. One, Jack Crawford, who we got to keep an eye on, obviously. So far, I think he's done what we hoped he had, uh, what we thought he had to do, which is smash Correa. He did beat him very, very convincingly. Um, in all sessions unfortunately for him though he also suffered from a classic f2 problem and in this particular thing something broke during the pit stop if i remember correctly and he had to retire from podium contention in the feature that sucks and is really unlucky but he still got a very very nice podium in the sprint race to start the season so Craw crawford is here to save his career at the very least i think and then last but not least, Taylor Barnard. And this is just a feel-good one because I was really afraid of this. Um, it looks like the PHM is actually decent enough for him to at least fight for things, you know. He was in points contention. I don't think he got any because he ran into problems as well. But um, yeah, the car can fight for points with a driver like him. So he won't just be damned to drive, you know, in P15 or something like we often saw Nisani last year. He was really the only benchmark in that car anyway. Now, with this out of the way, there's only one faster class left, is there? Let's go. Last but not least, what else could it be? Formula One is finally back on track. Now, I did ask myself, how should we proceed on this channel with Formula One? Should we cover it or should we not? Because obviously there's a lot of Formula One content out there. And the solution I've settled for so far is I'll include it, maybe not every week if it's a particularly stacked one, but I'll try to include it, but maybe only with an occasional 
point here or there. We don't need to have an in-depth discussion about how dominant Verstappen is, which by the way, if you somehow missed the race, Verstappen is dominant once again. I love watching it, by the way. I do like seeing these combinations of brilliant car and brilliant driver just clicking and dominating the field. I do sort of appreciate that no matter who it is really. Um, nonetheless, it doesn't tend to produce the most entertaining on-track product. And I think we can all agree there. With that out of the way, my highlights of the weekend really is first of all, the uh, nation of France is in shambles with the Alpine disaster, the only team to somehow lose time over the winter instead of gaining. And um, just a horrible looking race car in quali in particular, but also nowhere in the races. And as someone who doesn't really follow testing, this came entirely out of nowhere for me. Um, must be very depressing for both Gasly and Ocon, but yeah, this is really something that, it, was very reminiscent of what we had last year with McLaren with a team just taking a massive nosedive and I hope they can recover as well as McLaren did but um, I wouldn't hold my breath. The other one there was Sainz versus Leclerc that's always a nice one I do like to see Sainz beating Leclerc on merit quite a lot actually ever since he's been in the Ferrari although it tends to be forgotten a lot and I mean I don't want to exclude myself. I tend to often overlook and agree that, oh yeah, on paper, Leclerc is the more talented driver. Um, nonetheless, just the thing that we do need to keep an eye on. Science is actually quality and the more reliable racing driver at the very least, I'd say. And last but not least, and I think a point nobody actually mentioned on, on the posts I've seen anyway, is Alain Stroll had a good race. He got punted in uh, on lap one into turn one by Hülkenberg, which uh, was a bit unnecessary. But he actually had a very nice recovery drive all the way to P10 and only finished one position behind Fernando Alonso, his teammate, and he qualified high up on the grid. Well, Alonso qualified high up on the grid, so finishing behind was expected anyway. Not that it wouldn't be expected if he could. You know what I mean anyway. He had a stroll at a good race for once. We can give him a round of applause. It doesn't happen too often. Anyway. Now it's your time, leave me all of your thoughts about the racing gone by down in the comments, in particular your thoughts about F2 obviously and the Kimi thing and the F3, so honestly everything feeder series related. I'm just buzzing up, finally we've got the two big series back and I can't wait to see more next week. Stay tuned. <laughs>